Miss Nam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end and liked it, then hit the subscribe, bell notification, like, whatever. All that shindig. YouTube isn't new. You know how to use YouTube. So, October wrap-up. I actually read basically everything. One book I just because of my mood, which I knew was a possibility with that book. I didn't. And then another one I had to return to the library and there was a hold on it. I couldn't renew it. So hopefully I can get to that book in the future. But other than that, really, I read a bunch of books. Want to tell you which ones? Spotlight some and then do lessons or goofy sarcastic comments. So this month I read The Fate of the Tearling by Erica Johansson, In the Shadow of Blackbirds by Cat Winters, The Raven's Tale also by Cat Winters, Nightmares by Jason Segal and Kirsten Miller, I think. Probably. Yeah, that sounds right. A Memory Called Empire by an author whose name completely escapes me, but I don't think I was actually able to properly pronounce it even when I did have the book. The Thousandth Floor series by Catherine McGee, The Thousandth Floor, The Dazzling Heights, and The Towering Sky. Swipe Right for Murder by Derek Miller. Miller? Millman. 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 I'm confusing M last names now. Okay, her, na her, la her name, Krista Miller, was, had to be Miller then, because I don't know why I would re remember that n name otherwise. Yeah, sorry, Derek Millman. Giddy in the Knife by Tamsin Moore. M Moore? I think that's how you say it. Thirteen Doorways, Wolves Behind Them All by Laura Ruby. The Loneliest Girl in the Universe by Lauren James. Wilder Girls by Rory Power. And Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahurin. And I'm 99% sure that's how you say it because I'm pretty sure that's explained on her Twitter Twitter name. It's sad that but the authors have to do that, but for people like me, yeah. House of Furies by Madeline Rue. Capturing the Devil by Carrie Maniscalco. Salvation Day by, I think it's Casey Wallace. Kaylee Casey something K-A something I. The Psychology of Time Travel by Kate Mascaranis. I'm not sure that's what you'd say. What is it with authors last names this month? Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff. Rook by Sharon Cameron, I think. I, can you tell that I'm doing this frantically and didn't do any like prep work? The Mystic School for Music Craft by Jessica Corey, which is an Audible exclusive written story, but I think it's coming out physically in 2020. Book of Fire by Michelle Kenny. A Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayboard as a reread for the 600 millionth time. And I think, lastly, I read The Winter of, or what's the whole series called? The Witch, the Witch Winter series? Whatever we're calling this series that it was originally, I think, called the Bear and the Nightingale series. I read Bear and the Nightingale, The Girl in the Tower, and The Winter of the Witch. So in total, I think I read, I think I counted 26 books done, which I'm very happy with. And, um... I feel like I'm getting like completing a lot of stuff. Maybe it was with Capturing the Devil because that's the end of the series. Dark Dawn is the end of the series. I finally read The Winter of the Witch was the end of the series. Um, I finally read The Thousandth Floor, wrapping up a series there. I finally read Fate of the Tearling, wrapping up that series there. Finally, which took me years to get done. And yeah, so I feel like I, I succeeded in a lot of stuff. So I think this month my least favorite was The Fate of the Tearling. I just think this series went on like a decline with each each book which is too bad um i'm curious to know what what's gonna happen next because the author says on her goodreads of page that she is working on a fourth and a fifth tearling book i don't know that it i mean it has to be like a spin-off just set in the same world so i'd be curious to see where that is um but i feel like the the plots are what became really wonky and the author was just there's too much going on i don't know that she necessarily knew how to wrap it up. I think the most surprising book that I read this month was probably The Mystic School for Music Craft by Jessica Corey. First of all, I was just surprised. Like, I didn't, it was one of the free October reads that you can get from the Audible original with a membership. So I picked it up because the cover is freaking adorable and it sounded really cool. And then I was like, oh, it's about music. I probably won't comprehend most of it. I don't know how to play any musical instrument whatsoever. I don't know the proper terminologies. I never took any sort of classes or post-secondary uh, or extracurriculars on that sort of stuff um but i read it and it's adorable it was so cute i'm really excited to see what the physical finished copy looks like a hardcover copy um coming out i think it's on january 7th somewhere i'd have to double check uh so i kind of want to pick it up i want to at least see it and maybe pick it up because it was really cute it gave me a lot of those nostalgia feels that i got when reading nevermore because of harry potter just because it's like a school for magic um but i just thought it was just generally really cute and fun it had some darker stuff for a middle grade it also had some fun lighter stuff it had some really good messages and i just hadn't heard of it and i don't know i have an attitude of like well they only did an audible original of it like they wouldn't 
why wouldn't they like publish it in all formats if it was really good so that they could sell to wider audiences but i was wrong jeff kokori got me and i'm really excited about this one honestly picking a favorite this month was kind of hard because i feel like i was satisfied with a lot of these especially for wrap-ups of series so i think originally i ended up just putting writing down on my sheet that Gideon the ninth was my favorite which i i absolutely adored this and devoured it and i'm gonna reread it in december to actually like evaluate and review the content itself because I was just so distracted by how good it was but then like as I'm looking at these books like The Winter of the Witch could probably be on here too but um I keep looking at Serpent and Dove which is funny because I kept telling people like stop hyping it up it's you're you're being ridiculous and I'm I'm standing by that I think this book is overhyped by some people it's a great book but like y'all are acting as if we're starting a cult around it like that's just kind of excessive it's a wonderful book I can't wait to read the sequel um I was really curious how the heck they were gonna make a witch and a witch hunter marry each other and how that was gonna go and I really liked that whole that entire concept here I liked the magic I liked the rivalry between worlds I liked the messages of you know pitting these others against the others um and it's being manipulated by these other people I really liked this book it was it was a very big surprise read for me and um I really thoroughly enjoyed both of these especially so this month's lessons first off harmful tropes ruin series for me apparently and I've said this before a few times where I'm like oh my god the book is so like the cover is so pretty that like this book could suck and I'm still gonna keep it and I'm pretty sure I said this about the spines and I don't know what I'm gonna do now because this book was kind of ruined for me my it's not that it wasn't like good it was that the trope was used as really like I, it's icky to me and I just I don't think I've ever seen myself reading this series again because of it but like I already bought them the spines are pretty what do I do like I don't know what to do just stop writing books with harmful tropes on them okay honestly wilder girl made me real wilder girls what did I say wilder girl girls wilder girls oh my god what is happening uh it made me realize how terrifying I mean like having like an outbreak or whatever I feel like I could I could I've read enough books that I'm like oh my god that'd be scary but I could survive I could figure crap out but then like the concept of being on an isolated island that you cannot leave with just a bunch of girls basically that is an actual nightmare for me and I am yes I'm I am one of those people that I generally don't have many friends that are girls I just always seem to get along better with guys I was like that in high school I was like that just in like university and all that stuff I it, so I mean it, yeah this whole concept would be just hor horrendous honestly the fate of the tearling felt like it started off the author had this idea for a series and then like halfway through writing it the series she she had another idea for something else she could do in the world and instead of being like okay I'll leave this to the side to make a spin-off series if it sells well enough she tried to merge them and I don't it, it's it was so wonky confusing and I think that's why it was taking away from my my enjoyment of this series I just don't un, I was just so lost as to what series this was anymore it, there's no connect there wasn't like really no connection between the timelines Swipe Right for Murder taught me that sometimes I can kind of agree with terrorists. I mean, like, I'm not saying go kill people or whatever, but, like, if you're gonna do it, you know, take out the bad people in the world. Like, we never do that. It's the it's same thing with, like, whenever, like, a celebrity does. We're always like, you, you took them when you could have taken this person. You're like, yeah. Yeah, that's how just, like, society works. Like, oh, we, got, we lost a good person. And it's like Game of Thrones. I wouldn't watch Game... After I saw that people were being killed off. I stopped watching Game of Thrones when a good person died until I knew that a bad person also died. So I waited until Joffrey died to catch up. Nightmares just reaffirmed this like thing that I've always wanted that I want things that I drive in the drive where people can see in the exterior to be like nauseatingly bright purple. Like nightmares. Like I've always wanted a bright purple vehicle and I now want a bright purple house like from foundation to roof shingles it's all purple it can be various shades of purple but i want the purple the mystic school for music craft just reminded me i feel like i've said this one before but like we should all be required as human beings to go to boarding schools it just seems like there's so much that we miss by going to traditional i don't even know if it, well in canada they're traditional schools i mean i ended up going to catholic school but like ha getting to go to boarding school where like things can happen it just sounds so much more exciting maybe I just lived a very boring life myself as a human like when I went home I didn't like go party and do drugs or anything not that you're automatically going to do that in a boarding school but like shake things up a little bit and do something a little different 
I know reading is like people can like like whatever they like and dislike whatever they like, but I'm gonna stand by this that Capturing the Devil, Dark Dawn, and Winter of the Witch were all solid conclusions. For some reason I keep seeing people being like, oh my god, like Dark Dawn, like there's, it got like kind of tropey at the end. Apparently some people didn't pick up that it was a chosen one trope book and I'm like, how? How, how is that possible? Have you met me yet? Have you read any of the previous books? Of course it's a chosen one trope. But yeah, I'm standing by that, that all of those were solid conclusions to series that I loved. This isn't really a lesson, more of like a shout out to any like writers because it's Nanaimo or NaNoWriMo, NaNoWriMo bars, NaNoWriMo. Um, can someone combine this series with this one? That'd be really cool. I want something with Russia, or if you know of an existing series that is like that, with like historical fiction Russia, even if it can be before Russia, Russia was an actual unified country, that'd be even doper with witches because man the russians are a paranoid people um and they just always have been um i i would love for this mixture of of it to happen because like vasilisa in here is like there's witches and magic too but like i want like a, a witch and a witch hunter in russia like i want something like that and then salvation and the loneliest girl in the universe made me realize whilst it would be like terrifying for something like the loneliest girl in the universe to happen the idea of getting to live alone on a spaceship, I'd just bring some pets. I'd be completely content with life like that. Like it's whenever I see those like things on my timeline where it's like, if you got pay, if you were given like $400,000 a week to live in a place without any contact to the outside world, how many weeks would you sign up for? I'm like, all of them. I, I hate the outside world. Have you been, have you interacted with the outside world at all? Look who's running the world right now. Everything's messed up. Every time I open it, someone's done or said something stupid or offensive. And then we fold this like, oh, you're being a snowflake. No, you're just being a dick and we're calling you out for it. And it's just or the okay boomer thing right now I can't deal by the way I saw a New York Times uh, New York Times our article some I think it was some some opinion article from one of the writers being like I'm a 69 year old and I think he was trying to prove that he's not old but 69 is pretty old for for the average human being you're you're in elder age period at that time and then he somehow managed to blame it on Greta Thunberg and I was like we've hit like the triad of okay boomer you've officially like ascended to a whole new tier it's just it's it's so much also you guys called yourselves boomers already we've just switched what that means <laughs> and you took offense to it also if you don't act like a douchebag we're not gonna call you we're not gonna say okay boomer i know people who are the boomer age were like yeah we messed things up. I'm sorry. I'm going to try and fix it for you. We're not calling, we're not yelling okay boomer at them. We're yelling okay boomer at you because you blame a 16 year old who says clean up the planet. It's got lots of garbage for okay boomer shaming an, an entire generation. Well, people in that generation who reject the fact that they cause damage. Anyways, I don't know how we got on this topic. Anyways, um, this, this is the October wrap up. <laughs> I don't know what's happening right now. Anyways, I will link these books in the description box down below. I will also link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back. And uh, let me know in the comment section down below. I'm toying with next Tuesday's video idea, either to do like a career path of explanation of how I got to my position um, and or I'm going to do another Q&A because I have a lot of people say I liked the Q&A. And if you want me to do a Q&A, please, and, well, I'll do another one of those eventually anyways. Just put down below like a question that you have for me, bookish or non-bookish related, whatever whatever, you know, you're curious about. And yeah, 